Hello viewers, this video is for anybody who has a dead Sony PSLX 520 and this repair should also apply to the LX 500 and 510 as well as I'm sure a number of other Sony models. Uh, this is for if the turntable's dead, not for a non-moving tone arm. Uh, one of the first videos I did, even before I made this particular channel, was fixing the tone arm that would not move, and that's a matter of replacing the belt and lubing the rails. I'll put a link, if that's your problem, there's going to be a link right ab above, upper corner, uh, linking you to, that'll take you to that video so you can get the re right repair done. Uh, what happened this time is I was playing an LP and it got to the middle of the LP, the tone arm popped up, platter stopped spinning, and that was it. None of the controls would respond. Uh, the only thing I had that told me that it was on was this little light here. I don't even think any of the lights along the control panel were on. Uh, fortunately, I knew exactly what the problem was. Uh, it's fairly easy fix, so long as you know how to solder. Uh, I will have a link below to the service manuals. I will also have, uh, as well as telling you in the video, uh, listed down below what part you need to purchase, as well as you're going to need a full set of capacitors to replace. Uh, won't be any link to the actual part though simply because I find that links are always shifting and they go dead um, but with that name it's easy enough to look it up and first I guess a word about safety if you this is going to involve opening the machine up this plugs into the wall works on AC and uh, if you don't have the knowledge you don't have the skill set to actually work on this item uh, please don't do it and no matter what, if you are working on it, have it unplugged. Do not plug this in while you're working on it. You will be uh, exposing yourself to live AC connections inside the unit. So when it comes time to test it out, put the bottom back on, plug it in, test it then. Do not test it while it's wide open. Uh, I am not responsible for any uh, injury, damage, etc. that may occur as you attempt to do this repair. Uh, and this video is strictly for entertainment purposes and not meant as an instruction manual. So with that being said, let me move forward and show you what I did. Now if your tone arm is stuck in the middle like it is with mine, you will not be able to remove the aluminum platter. So first thing you want to do is remove the, f the cartridge from the tone arm and then pull off the rubber mat and then flip the turntable over on a pillow or some other soft cushion surface. With the bottom removed, you're going to want to support the turntable platter on the other side with your left hand so that it doesn't fall against the tone arm. And then you're going to slowly turn the motor wheel up at the upper left hand corner until you feel the tone arm moving towards its parked position. Once it reaches the parked position you'll flip it over and then we're going to re remove the platter. During this process be sure to stay away from any of the grease that you will find on the underside of the turntable. Now flip the turntable over and remove the platter. I have the bottom off the turntable now, exposing the uh, circuit boards. <clears throat> I'm going freehand with the camera so I can get in there and show you what I suspect. And uh, let's go down in here over to the power supply board. See the camera will focus this close. And my suspicion is this component right here. And there's two of them. There's one there, one here. Now, 
If my suspicion is right, well, it did not fail. Reality is, it did its job. When you're looking up that component, you want to look up, uh, it's ICP-N10. And I probably can't get a shot of it, but it says N10 there, and then down below there's a Z. The, whatever's down below, as far as I know, doesn't matter. That's I, a production code or something. But ICP stands for Integrated Circuit Protector. So basically that's a little fuse, and it blew. And, like I said, it didn't fail, it did its job, but what it's telling you is that something else in the board here has failed. And before I will proceed any further, I am going to have to assume that every one of these electrolytic capacitors that are 45 years old, they look brand new, that means nothing. I'm going to have to replace each and every one of those. So first order of business will be to remove this IC protector and test it. See if it has continuity or not. And uh, if need be, I'll pull this one out also. And I have my cap kit as well as some thousand microfarads to go here. And I'll replace all these capacitors before proceeding. On the plus side, everything here is marked, and we want, where are you at, PS409, right there, is your protector there. And, like I said, it's nice that everything on the bottom is also marked, but unfortunately, contrary to appearances, these don't unplug. They are all soldered into the board, so you can unsolder them, or I'm just going to masking tape it down and work with it that way. Now, in case you're wondering, these cheap desoldering tools actually work quite well. Trick is to get it nice and hot, so leave it sit for a little bit before you go using it. And I also like to put some... Uh, flux on there before I do this it just helps it melt down a little better there we go We're out. All right, so it's out. It's on my little meter. Now's the moment of truth to see if my assumption is correct. Yep, this has failed. And here is a new one. And it comes up as a resistor point. 38 ohms so I guess there's a certain amount of resistance to it and when you if you're getting these like I said it's ICP N10 and you typically just buy them as a set of like 10 or however many you want uh, I bought mine on AliExpress cheapest location I could find them also easy to order from but you can also get them on Amazon eBay etc and I think it was like $5 total, $6 maybe, for the whole set. Had to wait a few weeks to get them. But if you're going to search for them on AliExpress, when you type in ICP-N10, the first page, these will not be on there. At least from my experience, they weren't. So you have to go to page 2 or 3 or whatever in order to find them. And there were cheaper ones than this on there, but they looked very low quality. They looked sketchy. So I decided to stay away from them 
And these are have the identical markings. They even have the Z on the bottom, which really you can ignore that. But in this particular instance, they are the same. So let me solder the new one in there. And then I am going to have to move on to every capacitor. And I'll mark them all off here with a Sharpie. And uh, the circuit board on the top should be marked negative and positive. And on the bottom, it is also. But I will make sure that if there's no notations that I clearly mark it so that I get the polarity correct on there because um, you don't want to get through to the very end, power it up, and find out that you slipped up and made a mistake on just one of the capacitors. So uh, just be careful of that. Okay, the power supply board is all recapped. Have my new IC protector in place. And these capacitors here, I use some double-sided foam tape under them to hold them into place. The original ones were just sitting there loosely and uh, I decided to secure them like that. All right, the IC protector is replaced. All the capacitors on the power supply board have been replaced. So now let's do a test, see what we get. Power on. I know I did have that light showing up before. I don't recall if I had any lights up here on the control panel. But let's uh, hit play and see what happens. And we have motion on the turntable platter and the tone arm is moving. So that repair did fix the problem. I can't really take credit for this because a few years ago when I had replaced the belt for the tone arm, I had seen another video. But that video was old and it was very unclear. I mean, it was just blurry as anything and... Uh, but it did help me uh, get an idea of where the problem was. And we are fixed. I have not yet replaced the capacitors on the logic board. I'm going to do that next. As a side note, when you go to test your turntable, make sure you have the platter back in place. And it's also a good idea to put a 45 or a LP on top of that also. I went through all the capacitors that I changed off the power board, checking them, and everything was coming up within tolerance. And I was getting kind of discouraged that I didn't actually find the problem until I got to this 100 microfarad capacitor, small one. Unfortunately, I don't know where in the board this one was located. And this one comes up as a 14.3 ohm resistor does not even come up as a capacitor anymore. Yep. So I'm going to assume that this capacitor failed and that's what took out the power supply board. Now that that's taken care of, I'm going to lift up this board and there is a a lot of small capacitors in there. This logic board is operating just fine, but while I have it apart and knowing that the age of the capacitors, uh, I'd rather replace the capacitors now rather than waiting for something to fail and then take out a transistor or something else that's going to be much harder to track down. Okay, so I have everything back together now, closed up. I have it hooked up to my stereo, powered on. If you're fairly new to electronics repair, um, but you have a little bit of experience, uh, this is actually a very nice uh, project to learn on. Sim simply because those uh, PC boards are easy access just by taking the bottom off. Uh, they're not crammed tight, so it's spread out nicely for you to work on them. And most importantly, everything about them is printed on both sides of the circuit board. So when you flip it over, you're not hunting around through a bunch of uh, solder joints trying to find the one that you need to 
uh, to undo. Um, so yeah, that's, it's, this was actually a very easy, uh, it went, went well, it was pleasant to work on. Uh, but now's the moment of truth. Let's test it out and see what we get. So I'll press the start button. Platter spinning, which it wasn't doing before. The arm drops down. And we have sound. Quartz lock light is on. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, speed. Speed works. Captain Beef heart sounds good at any speed. And watch the quartz lock. And it comes back on. Arm lift. Arm drop works. Arm movement works. Drop. And finally, return. Well, this repair is done. I am back up and uh, playing again. So, well, if you like this video, please like, share, and please subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.